Ao. Shalom once again. Aras Tafari. And we're touching on the 1111 because today is the November 11th, 2011, otherwise known as 111111. Now, we just touched on Psalm 71, which is according to the Ethiopian um, daily psalms and the ancient Hebraic daily psalms. Psalm 71 is the psalm to be read on the 11th day of November. Now, as we've been discussing in the last part, actually, according to the ancient numbering, Psalm 71 is Psalm 70, according to ancient numbering. Now, this is when we study and show ourselves approved. We, we, we understand those, those nuances there. Now, Psalm 72 is actually the rightful, according to the ancient calculation, psalm for this day. So Psalm 71, we just chanted. We, we went through Psalm 71. It's a beautiful psalm. And we say that, we say that psalm was like a prologue. Was like a was like a prologue. Now we're getting into the real um, heart of the matter. Now Psalm seventy one. Let's let's write this here. Psalm seventy one. Psalm seventy one. Psalm seventy one. Right is actually the Psalm seventy two, according to the ancient numbering, is a particular psalm. So we are touching on both of these um, psalms. Now, a couple of things we want to discuss about Psalm 72. Psalm 72 is, is, is very, very important because Psalm 72 is actually a messianic, is known as a messianic psalm. If you turn your, your Schofield Study Bibles and those who have it digitally, um, you can look at it on your tablet or your computer, but you can download it if you haven't downloaded it already from uh, Line of Judah, LOJSociety.org, and using your computer, your tablet, or your mobile device. Because if you look at the footnote in um, Psalm, for Psalm 72, it says that this is a psalm for Solomon. So first, before we get into the rightful psalm, the rightful Psalm 71 is actually Psalm 72. Now, we've said it a couple of times, but it, 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 bears, it, it bears being repeated. You know what I'm saying? It bears being repeated. Because um, most folks don't even understand that there's such a thing as an ancient numbering of the Psalms, which is different than the way the Psalms are numbered today. And this is one of the reasons why we have pointed out our um, publication here, the Mesmur Dawit, which is in Amharic, as well as English. This is the parallel Bible of the Psalms of David, including Psalm 151. 151 is also contained in this Mesmur Dawit, and this is a special jubilee printing and publishing of this. And those who may have ordered um, the, the first version we spent another month or so going over this and annotating it and adding significant details to this particular one. We, we hope to do it with all the various different books, but sometimes we haven't been able to go through that particular work of, of um, providing the verse by verse or, or passage by passage. And we didn't go through every verse, go through this in the excruciating detail that we would like, but some of the main um, details have been addressed in this particular um, in this particular version, such as the whole thing about um, the the ancient numbering, the ancient numbering being different. This is the reason why Psalm 71 and 72 apply to the 11, 11, 11. Now, if you add 11, 11, 11 together, you have 33. Now, is that significant? Well, some 
if they look at it masonically, that might be significant, 33 degrees, so forth and so on. But there's also 33 vertebrae in the back. In other words, the spinal column has 33 vertebrae. Um, what is also um, kind of interesting, if you, <laughs> if you think about it, the Ethiopic, let's write this up here. This equals 33. There are 33 fidel in the Amharic. So the Amharic has, the Amharic has 33 fidel as well. There are 33, um, for lack of a better word, uh, um, uh, syllables because of uh, phonetics. You could call it letters for short. There are 33 letters in the royal Amharic. So there's an Amharic link to this as well. So some may look at the 11, 11, 11 to be Masonic, but as we just explained, two key examples, the spinal column, the spinal column has 33 vertebrae, and the royal Amharic of the King of Kings of Ethiopia has 33 letters. There are 33 primary letters in the Amharic Fidel, or for lack of a better word, alphabet, what we call the Hahus. Just a, a point, um, a little bit food for thought. Now, let us go over this before we get into the Amharic. Let us touch on a couple of basic things about this particular um, 72nd Psalm. What do you know about the 72nd Psalm? The 72nd Psalm is a Psalm of Solomon. It's considered, and in the Schofield uh, Study Bible, they tell us that this Psalm as a whole that forms a complete vision of the Messiah's kingdom. So this particular Psalm, is a psalm for the Messiah's kingdom. Now, how interesting is it that the rightful psalm, according to the ancient numbering and calculation, if we say 71st, would actually be Psalm 72, according to the ancient numbering of the psalms. And that Psalm 72 would be called the psalm for Solomon. And that this psalm, it forms a complete vision of the messianic kingdom or of Christos' Christ's kingdom. So could there be a link between 11, 11, 11 and Christ, the messianic kingdom? Well, of course. We are living in, in, in those times and and. The other, many of the other signs that the prophets and even the master himself, Yeshua, our Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, have, have, have warned us as well as through us this word being preached to the world, these signs are, have already come to pass. So now it's, it's significant the link that we have 11, 11, 11, Add it all up together is 33. If you don't get caught up on the Eurocentric so-called um, builders, because remember the stone, which the builders what? Which the builders refuse has become the head cornerstone. And now the cornerstone is not the capstone. That needs to be understood, that the cornerstone is that first building block. Now, as we've been teaching and, 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 and preaching on and showing facts and evidence that Ethiopia was there in the beginning, and Ethiopia is that missing link in Bible history, Bible prophecy, and Keeley in this particular day and time. Not the secular Ethiopia that you might see on the news, but we're speaking about holy Ethiopia and we Ethiopian Hebrews at home and abroad, especially those of us who know the half of the story 
that Babylon has not told and has suppressed and has lied and blasphemed against concerning the king of kings, Kedamawi, Hila, Selassie, and his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach. Now, the psalm for this day, now rightly, is the 72nd psalm. And the 72nd psalm, we are told, as a whole, it forms a complete vision of the Messiah's kingdom as far as the Old Testament revelation extended. So, as far as Old Testament revelation extended, Psalm 72, it, it forms that complete vision of Christ's kingdom or of Christ in his kingly character's kingdom. Now, this is the rightful psalm for this particular prophetic and interesting day. Now, let's go on. All of David's prayers will find their fruition in the kingdom. So, all that our ancestor, the great king, David, prayed for, have their fulfillment and fruition and their, their fruitfulness their fruitfulness is in the establishment of Christ's kingdom, the establishment of the messianic kingdom. Now, it says that verse 1 refers to the investiture of the king's son. So verse 1 is referring to the investiture of the king's son, Yenugus Lij, with the Mengist, with the Mengist. Now, the word Mengist, I know a lot of you are probably familiar with it because of, of the anti, one of the Ethiopian antichrists named um, Mengistu, Haile Mariam, and the wickedness that he was involved in, in in fallen Ethiopia with the careless Ethiopians. But don't make a mistake about it. The Mengist is greater than so-called Mengistu. Now, it's important to understand that these, this is all connections for us now as we say, well, what does the 1111 mean to us? Does the 1111 have any reference to us? Well, we already pointed out a couple of very interesting links with the 1111, especially as we allow our faith to direct us because we said we was going to come to this recording and to record uh, a message just scripted out or just taking other information out here. Or there. We said we were going to begin reasoning as we did and we're going to begin with the scripture and the psalm for today and just allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. And already at this particular point of the recording, my, my head and my heart is full. I mean, I am so joyful because now I even see a, more of a, 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 a connection with this particular day, but a groundation for us. And now I long to get these, you know, this particular video to continue this teaching and get this video so that um, the brothers and sisters would have an opportunity to also view it and to pray on it and to meditate on it as well. Um, as they say, make hay while the sun shines. Amen. So, this is go through this footnote. Um, so, it said the verse 1, it refers to the investiture of the king's son with the kingdom of which investiture, the formal description, is given in Daniel. So it's now giving us Daniel, Revelation. It gives us some, some verses. And these are what I call the study verses for the Decum as I'm ordered. These are the areas you study. Now, if we were going through a more expanded teaching on this, we would go through each one of these verses. You know what I'm saying? And it's important to go through each one of these particular verses to get a full, a full idea. But now what's very interesting about this is that it quotes, uh, it refers to Revelation 5, verses 5 to 10. Now we know that Revelation 5 and 5 is dealing with Moa and Bessas, the Emma, Negeta, Yehuda. 
the conquering lions, the tribe of Judah. And we know this as Kedamawi Haila Selassie. And we're speaking reality in the real world. You know what I'm saying? In the real world. Now, verses 2 to 7, 12 to 14, it gives the character of the kingdom. And then there's a reference to Isaiah 11, verses 3 to 9. Now, the emphatic word is righteousness. The emphatic word in this psalm is righteousness. Now, Bamarinya, in the Amharic, this, this word righteousness would be Zidic, Zidic, right? And we have Zidic, or some of it, T-S apostrophe D apostrophe Q. Some might write it as Zadok. That's the key. This is this is the key word right here. The key word is Siddic. Siddic. Or in a Angles or English sense, that would be Zadok. Zadok. That's the key word or the emphatic, the emphasized, the word that's emphasized in this psalm is righteousness or Siddic. Now, the Sermon on the Mount, it describes the kingdom righteousness. So this day, 11, 11, 11, is kingdom time because of the alignment, you understand, the, the alignment in heaven. It says whatever we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. So this is, this is significant. So the heavens now are declaring the glory of God, of Jah, if you please, of Yah and the Moshiach and Christ in his kingly character. Now we on earth, reflecting on this, it connects us with that spirit, with the spirit of truth, with the spirit of God, as above, so below. Now, the Sermon on the Mount, it describes the kingdom righteousness. Now, verses 8 to 11 speak of the universality of the kingdom, that the kingdom is universal. You understand? It's universal. Not just in the secular senses of universal that people, men and people, men and ignorant people believe, but in the sense of the universe. It encompasses not just earth, but also the heavens in a universal way. Verse 16 now hints at the means by which the universal blessing, the universal barakat, is to be brought in. So verse 16, it's important to make a note on verse 16. Now, converted Israel will be the, quote, handful of corn, end quote, according to Amos 9 and 9, as the king himself in death and resurrection was the single grain, the, quote, corn of wheat, end quote, according to John chapter 12, verses 24. Now, this also is significant. So each one of these, each one of these can be considered like bullet points. And y'all willing, if possible, we might go into a little more of each one of these particular bullet points because there's much more that's connected with a Rastafari, Rastafari revelation in this particular time. And it further, it further verifies what many of us have already been saying, preaching, teaching, singing about, rejoicing in, expecting, waiting for, hoping in. Amen. Amen. It says, um, to the Jew first, or to the Hebrew first, is the order alike of church and kingdom. So to the Hebrew first, or to the Judahite, to the Judahite first. Now, if we understand who, on a natural level, who is Judah, true Judah in this time, is the so-called African Afro-American, the so-called Africans 
in the Americas, those who came here in the course of the trans Ethiopic ocean slave trade, what's known as the Middle Passage. So the order is alike of church and kingdom. So when we're speaking about church, we are also speaking about kingdom. Let's understand the connection with that. Now, Romans 1 and 16, Acts of the Apostles 13 and 46, and Acts of the Apostles 15, verses 16 and 17. Now, it is through restored Israel, restored Israel, and we're speaking about the lost sheep. We're speaking about the so-called black folks who have been sold into slavery in the Americas and the Caribbean, and 400 years later, the majority of their descendants don't even know that they are Hebrews. You understand? Know don't even know that they're, they're Hebrews, and that's part of the work of the enemy to keep them hoodwinked and bamboozled, thinking that they are so-called black Americans, African Americans, thinking that they are so-called West Indians, thinking that they're so-called Hispanics, and not knowing what their true identity. See, when they come to that knowledge of the half of the story that hasn't been told to them, then this is the idea of restored Israel. So we're moving into a time when people say, well, the end time, and people talk about the last days, so forth and so on. We have to put these matters into perspective because it's not the end days or the end times for us as the Beta Israel, but it's the end times for our Gentile persecutors and their descendants who still are moving in that same system of slavery. And, 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 and the, the world system today is based on those horrors of the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. So it's the same system, even though it's 400 years later. And this is why that same system is facing so many problems, whether we call it a debt crisis, economics, wars, rumors of wars, global warming. What, you know, there's a whole litany of, of prophetic issues that face the Gentile dominion in its last days, or so-called white supremacy. That's, that's basically, or the Anglo-European, the Anglo-American, so forth and so on. So it is through restored Israel that the kingdom is to be extended over the earth. So it's through that restored Israel. And now the lost black sheep who come into that acceptance and knowledge of self as Beta Israel is part of that restored Israel that extends the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ over the entire earth. So it touches on this universality, you understand? There's many different tribes, people, and kindred which are called into that. Now, a Rastafari revelation is that manifestation of prophecy. It's the only, it's the, it's the only uh, we could say, movement that qualifies scripturally, biblically, historically, prophetically to fulfill that. Yovas. So Zechariah chapter 8, verses 13 and verse 20 to 23, then it says, To see Psalm, see, to see Psalm 80, 89, let's see, LXXX 5678IX9, see Psalm 89, which is the next in order of the messianic psalms so psalm 89 is next in the, the there are some psalms which are considered messianic psalms and the true psalm for this day when we properly align the ancient numbering according to the ethiopian hebrew um daily psalms is 71 but in the ethiopic Psalm 71 is what you know in the King James as Psalm 72. And Psalm 
72 is considered a complete vision of the Messiah's, the Moshiach's kingdom so far as the Old Testament revelation extended. So there was already a, an, an Old Testament revelation concerning the Moshiach, concerning Christ, even Christ in his kingly character that we as the Rastafari say is fulfilled in Moa and Bessa Zaim Managere Yehuda Kadamawi Haila Salase Siyuma Egazi Avihar Nagusa Neges Lechopia, the Konkan line, the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty Haila Salase the first, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia, is the fulfillment of that. And now we as Rastafari especially we as Rastafari who recognize the connection of our people in the diaspora, the Americas and the Caribbean, as that lost sheep of the Beta Israel. This is why that prophetic message and the, and the preaching and the teaching must go out there for both the conversion as well as the restoration of that remnant of the lost sheep of the Beta Israel who will be preserved through these great tribulations that 11, 11, 11 is a harbinger of, is a, 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 a pre-taste, a, a harbinger. Now, what's noted about 11, 11, 11, which is today, is that this is, this is Friday. Now, we know that Friday actually is the eve of Shabbat. Friday is actually the eve of the Senbet. So this makes this particular time also important, you understand, in that context as well, in a Kedusha way, in a holy way. So all of these things cannot just be so-called coincidences, because a coincidence means two incidences. This is more than two things that actually um, um, overlap and, 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 and verify and reflect, you understand, and reflect the same truth, the same vision. So there's a vision, a complete vision of the messianic kingdom, which is given in this 72nd Psalm. So stay tuned. We're going to get into it. Just a little bit more, we're going to get into the 72nd Psalm, which is a complete vision of Christ and his kingly character's kingdom or the messianic kingdom of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach.